Alright, in this video we're going to do a partial fractions problem. Um, the first thing is to decompose our par partial fraction as the following and figure out the coefficients. And so we take our single x term and put a number a on top and then b over x squared. And then we have c over x plus 1 and then d over 1 plus x squared. Alright, and then we multiply both sides by the denominator, x squared times x plus 1 times 1 plus x squared. On the left side, that's simply going to leave us with just 1. On the right side, we'll have ax, x plus 1, 1 plus x squared. Then our b term, the x squareds will cancel out, and we'll have x plus 1, 1 plus x squared, and then our x plus 1 terms will cancel out, leaving us with x squared, 1 plus x squared, and then our 1 plus x squared terms will cancel out, leaving us with x squared times x plus 1. Alright, I think that looks okay. Sorry, we're running out of room. This is a long problem, big problem. Um, the easiest thing to do here, um, you could start equating coefficients or you can pick clever values of x that will make things cancel out. So notice if you let x equal 0, for example, this first term is going to cancel out if you plug 0 in for x. The b term will remain, the c term will also cancel out if you plug in x equals 0, and the d term will also cancel out if you plug in x equals 0. Alright, so if we plug in 0 on the left side, we simply get 1. Again, our a term cancels. We're only left with our b term. If you plug in 0, you'll get 1. And then 1 plus 0 squared, which is 1. So if we multiply 1 and 1, we simply get 1. And we get that b equals 1. Okay. So next we can also kind of do this trick again and pick another clever value of x that will make things simplify down. The only other value that will really work to get things to cancel will be negative 1. So again, notice if we plug in negative 1, our a term will cancel, our a factor will cancel because of the x plus 1 term. The b will also cancel. The c term will not cancel, but again, however, the d term will cancel as well. So we'll get c times negative 1 squared, then we'll get 1 plus negative 1 squared, and again that's simply going to equal 1. Well negative 1 squared is 1, again negative 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get 2c equals 1, or c equals 1 half. Okay, so we've got our b value, we now have our c value as well. Um, so we still need to figure out our a and d value. And again here the only thing it looks like to do is really to multiply this out and uh, do some equating of coefficients. So this is going to be pretty tedious. Um, so again there's no way I'm going to run out of room here pretty quickly but I'll try to squeeze it in here. So let's see. We'll have if I multiply the x plus 1 times 1 plus x squared we'll get x plus x cubed, we'll get a plus 1 term, and then a plus x squared term. Let's see, on our b terms, we'll get x times 1, so we'll get a bx term. We'll get x times x squared, which is x cubed, so we'll get a plus bx cubed term. We'll get 1 times 1, times b. We'll get 1 times x squared, times b, so bx squared. Keep going here, and let's see. So we'll have x squared times 1 times c, that'll give us cx squared. x squared times x squared times c, that'll give us a plus cx to the fourth term. And then lastly, it looks like we're going to get a dx squared, excuse me, dx cubed. And then x squared times 1 will be x squared, so plus dx squared. Okay, so I'm going to now multiply out this first term on another page because I'm out of room and start combining um, my like terms. Alright, so we've got 1 equals 
we'll get an ax squared term, we'll get an ax to the fourth term, we'll get a plus ax term, plus ax cubed, and I'm going to put this stuff underneath just so I can squeeze it all in here. Um, let's see, make sure I didn't do anything crazy here. I think that looks okay. So plus bx, plus bx cubed. Um, we had a plus b term, plus bx squared, plus cx squared, plus cx to the fourth, plus dx cubed, plus dx squared. So now I'm going to simply put my like terms together. It looks like we have an x to the fourth term and an x to the fourth term. I'm going to factor out the x to the fourth, and then I'll have an a plus c left over. So that'll take care of my ax to the fourth and my cx to the fourth. And then, let's see, let's look at our x cubed terms. So I've got an a term, that'll take care of that. I've got a plus b term, that'll take care of that one. And then I've got a plus d term. Okay, and honestly, it looks like we can stop right now. Um, we could keep going on with the equating of the coefficients, but we actually have enough to solve the problem at this point because we know b and we know c already. Since we know c, we can find a. Once we know a and b, that will also allow us to solve for d. So we actually don't have to keep going on this problem in terms of the equating coefficients. So if we think about the term on the left-hand side, there's no x to the fourth term. So that means the coefficient that goes with x to the fourth on the left side is going to be a 0. That means a plus c has to equal 0 as well. The coefficient on the left side has to be the same coefficient on the right side. The coefficient on the left side, again, there's a 0 x cubed. The coefficient that goes with x cubed on the right side is a plus b plus d. Well, we already know that c equals 1 half. So that tells us that a, in fact, must equal negative 1 half. And now that we know a, we can plug in negative 1 half. We know that b is equal to 1. We're trying to figure out d. So on the left side, again, we'll get positive 1 half, negative 1 half plus 1 being 1 half. And if we subtract that 1 half, we'll also get that d equals negative 1 half. So now we have all of our coefficients necessary in order to do this problem. Okay, so let's rewrite the original integral and integrate this thing. Sorry, I'm going a little fast here. Got the 10 minute time constraint on YouTube, so trying to make sure we don't run out of time here. So again, our original problem was to integrate, well now using our partial fractions, we said that a is negative one-half over x plus b and we said that b is one I'm gonna bring the x squared up as x to the negative second plus c we said c that was one-half over x plus one and we had that d was negative one-half over one plus x squared alright so we're just about there now again sorry for running out of room here if you integrate the first term, you'll get a negative one-half ln absolute value of x when you integrate one over x. If we integrate x to the negative second, we'll get negative, pull the negative out front, x to the negative first, we can rewrite that as one over positive x. Then we'll have plus one-half. Again, if you integrate x plus one, you'll get ln of x plus one. And lastly, we have to use our arctangent formula on 1 plus x squared, and we'll get arctangent of x plus c. And that is now our, our final answer for this partial fractions problem. So negative 1 half ln of x minus 1 over x plus 1 half ln of absolute value of x plus 1 minus 1 half arctangent of x plus c. So. I'm going to take a look at this one. Hopefully I didn't do anything too crazy. These problems are very long and tedious. It's definitely easy. If you make one little mistake in terms of your multiplication, everything ends up going haywire. So hopefully I didn't do anything wrong there. If you have any other questions, um, I've got all kinds of integration problems on my website. Feel free to take a, a visit. And if you have any other questions, just send me an email.